And this episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. HelloFresh delivers fresh, quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week so you can savor summer flavors right from home. HelloFresh now has 30 dinner recipes to choose from each and every week, and that is the most of any meal kit. Discover seasonal summer recipes like cucumber salad stuffed pita pockets, chicken sausage stuffed peppers, Tuscan spice shrimp, and so much more. Save time, money, and stress. HelloFresh won't get in the way of a busy day. Stay on track with simple recipes and fresh pre-portioning ingredients that cut out meal prep and trips to the grocery store. HelloFresh also offers veggie, pescatarian, and fit and wholesome meals to make it easy to stick to your goals. I know HelloFresh makes my meal prep so much easier during the week, and I think you'll enjoy it too. I've been using HelloFresh long before they were ever a sponsor of this channel. So go to HelloFresh.com and use the code Mr. Make It Happen for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. That's HelloFresh.com code Mr. Make It Happen for 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're keeping it simple, easy, and inexpensive. I'll be showing you how to make a delicious hash brown breakfast casserole. The entire recipe comes together in one hour or less, and we're cooking it all in one skillet, making the cleanup super easy on you. But before we get into the recipe, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right, my friends, meet me in the kitchen. Let's make it happen. Let's cover these ingredients real quick. We have some Jimmy Dean breakfast sausage. This is the all natural version, but grab whatever one you like at the store. We have some cheese that we're gonna shred ourselves. I'm going with Colby Jack, but again, you can use whatever cheese you have at the house. One and a half cups of milk, 20 ounces of hash brown that's been defrosted. We have our eggs. We got some garlic paste, onion, red and green bell pepper. We're gonna kick the flavor up to the next level with better than bouillon sauteed onion or veggie paste, really whatever kind that you have at the house. This is just gonna add some concentrated flavor to the party. All right guys, so as you can see, we've already added one pound of breakfast sausage. For the pork patrol lurking in the comments, yes, you can use chicken or turkey sausage. Please substitute it with whatever you like. What I like to do here is cook over medium high heat, kind of flatten the sausage out so that it makes maximum surface area contact with the skillet. That's gonna ensure you get some nice brown bits. That's gonna provide some texture like you see right here. So once your sausage is starting to brown up nicely like you see right here, you wanna make sure you break it up. You want nice small bits of sausage throughout your casserole. Tons of flavor in this recipe, guys. Doesn't get much simpler than this. Let me know in the comments what other breakfast recipes you wanna see. All right, so once the sausage is nice and brown, we're gonna take a slotted spoon and remove it. That's gonna leave behind all that flavor in our skillet, and we don't wanna get rid of that. No flavor left behind. Go ahead and preheat those ovens to 350 degrees, and then we're gonna cook our veggies right in that sausage fat. All right, so now I'm going in with about a tablespoon of Kerrygold butter. If there's any excess grease in the pan, you can remove that, but we didn't have a whole lot left in there, so we're just gonna add a little butter, and then we're going in with our veggies. So in goes the onion and bell pepper. I like to use the red and green bell pepper just for some color contrast, but you can feel free to use whatever you have at the house. I'm gonna add a teaspoon or two of avocado oil. That's gonna help ensure nothing sticks to the bottom of the skillet, and it's gonna raise the smoke point of the butter to make sure that that doesn't burn. That way we get that delicious butter flavor in there without the bitterness that you get when the butter starts to burn on you. All right, our next guest to arrive to the flavor party is gonna be the garlic. We're going in about two teaspoons of garlic paste or fresh garlic, whatever floats your boat. You wanna add the garlic after you give the veggies a little bit of a head start because the garlic has a tendency to burn and we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna get those veggies nice and tender, add in the garlic, and then we're going in with a teaspoon of better than bouillon veggie base. I'm using onion base today, but you can use the veggie base. All right, so now that the vegetables are cooked down, we're gonna go ahead and add back in that sausage that we made earlier. And then the shredded hash brown. Make sure you defrost this, guys. You don't wanna do it frozen. It'll start to release a lot of water which I guess isn't the end of the world, but it's best to do it defrosted from my experience. Fold all of that together and then we're gonna mix together our eggs and get this ready for the oven. Gonna go down with a little bit more all-purpose seasoning or just a little salt and pepper, keep it simple. 
Use what you got on hand. All right, here in the mixing bowl, we have eight eggs. I'm gonna break out the whisk and beat them like they stole my money. Make sure you get them nice and smooth. And then we'll add in one and a half cups of whole milk or half and half. In goes the milk. There we go, that's eight eggs plus one and a half cups of milk. To that, we're gonna add about a cup of cheese. Again, guys, I'm using Colby Jack today, but use whatever you like. Pepper Jack would be nice to add a little bit of spice or really whatever you got in the fridge. Save yourself a grocery store trip. That's the name of the game today because groceries are expensive. All right, so we're just gonna work that cheese in to the egg mixture and then we're gonna pour this right into our casserole and that is going into the oven at 350 for about 50 minutes or so. All right, so now we're gonna add that right to the same skillet. I'm using a 12 inch cast iron skillet for this recipe guys, but a nine by 11 casserole dish would do well also. Trying to keep this a one pot recipe for you guys, make it nice and simple. So just fold all that together and then guess what? We're gonna top it with more cheese cause why the hell not? We're here for a good time, not a long time. There we go. All the good stuff in there. You can see the color from the bell peppers really standing out. The red and the green looks good. We got the sausage that we crisped up nicely in the skillet. All right, so we're gonna smooth that out and then top it with the remainder of our Colby Jack cheese and then into the oven at 350 for 50 minutes. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and top this with the remaining Colby Jack cheese. Probably about a cup or so, roughly. You don't have to go too heavy with it, just enough to coat the top. If it looks like it's gonna overflow, depending on the size of your, your casserole dish or your skillet, you could put something underneath it to make sure that you don't have anything spill out into your oven because we all know that's not fun to clean up. That'll get your wife or your husband upset at you and we wanna avoid that. There we go. And that, my friends, is ready for the oven. All right, guys, as if we didn't have enough flavor going on, we're gonna go ahead and pop four to five pieces of bacon into that same oven and we're gonna use this as a topping for our casserole. Aluminum foil lined baking sheet makes the cleanup nice and easy. And that's what we're all about. And that's going in the oven for just a few minutes. Then we'll dice it up nice and fine and use that as a topping for the casserole. And this, my friends, is how we're looking after about 50 minutes in the oven at 350 degrees. Optionally, if you wanna brown the top a little bit, you could put it under the broiler for three to four minutes. You do wanna let this cool also for about 15 minutes before you cut into it as well. All right, remember guys, you eat with your eyes first, so it's never a bad idea to add some additional garnish. Today I'm going down with some freshly grated Parmesan cheese right on top. The residual heat from the skillet will help that kind of melt on in there. And then we'll top it with those bacon bits that we diced up fresh out of the oven. Here comes the bacon bits. Just spread them out evenly. Try not to eat all the bacon before you get it on the skillet. Easier said than done. Some diced chai for a pop of color. And a little flavor. Onion flavor pairs nicely with this recipe. You could also use parsley if that's what you got in the fridge, no big deal. Oh man, this looks good. And this, my friends, is the part where I tell you to brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Say it with me, guys, looking good. The only thing left to do is get in here for a taste test. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right, so we went ahead and plated this up. I found my fork and now for the moment of truth. Let's get in there for a taste test. You guys have got to give this one a try. 